right uh okay right uh today my talk is about uh flexbox okay it's about like this mystifying flexbox uh I think like a lot of people I think how many of you have already like have some ideas about flexbox already like quite a lot. Like so, it, it won't be a introduction talk basically. So I I won't go through. Uh, basically, this talk will be about to go through some weirdness about flexbox and when to use flexbox. Yeah. So okay, next is there's a lot of resources about flexbox. I think the famous ones because it's I'm not going to go through flexbox because like it is too grand a topic and it is. Have a lot of things. I think you you know like flexbox. You have a lot of your shorthand, your axis, your column and row. All this is like I don't think I can finish it in fifteen minutes. It's like I can spend two hours talking about it and it will never end. So yeah. So this basically I I will show some list of resources about flexbox. So this is a famous one by CSS. The the famous CSS tricks like the complete guide about flexbox. So. This shows all the basic terminology, basically like a dictionary. So every time like I forgot anything about my flexbox direction, which flex grow, what it does, I always go here and find out what what is this about. Then the next one is like this YouTube series by Wes Boss. Okay, this guy like he does YouTube series about uh for tech stuff. So he has all this. Basically, this YouTube series is about how the introduction of flexbox and describe. Every single property or what it does. So I think he explained much better than me. So it's <laughs> it's a it's a it's a it's a good good way that you can go to this channel and see, like to if you want to understand in depth about like flexbox. Yeah. So next one is like, have you played this game like flexbox froggy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this one, uh, if you play this game, really, you become like a flexbox grammar expert. Because it's it's like you know all the terminology, but somehow it's like okay. So how do I use row reverse? It's like somehow it's like uh, how does it apply to what I what you are doing in your layouts? Yeah. So next one is this like CodePen Flexbox playground. This is quite good. It's also another like uh, dictionary guide, but it's more like uh, interactive. So you can actually see uh, you can test out like. Yeah, row reverse column, row reverse. Like, see what it does. Ah, uh, each property. Yeah, it's like this. This person like make a code pen about this, so you can have a look at this. All right. So next one is some my blocking things about flexbox that you expect what it's supposed to do. Like you say, I want to flex justify content something, but somehow it doesn't do that. Why? It's like oh. So example is like sticky footer. Like have you like tried to do sticky footer? Like you know there's this like sticky footer. Everyone want to do sticky footer. Then there's this like oh this flexbox uh, solution that you can do sticky footer. It's like oh this person come up with this like soft flexbox. Like this GitHub repo like he has seven thousand three hundred stars. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like oh this solution is like oh yeah he post he post this solution. It's like oh like you try it out. Then it's like eh how come it doesn't work? It's like it works in your like Chrome, Firefox. Then you suddenly like you want to support like older browsers like your IE. Then you look at it. It's like then you post like or oh, somebody say that oh no. It's like how come I cannot see my text and stuff like that. Then it's like oh what just happened? Yeah. So so in fact you actually post a updated code that sort of like solve the whole issue and it's so long. <laughs> I yeah. So that is the thing about like if you're using Flexbox, you have to be careful. It's like browser support. It's like it's only supported. The latest, like latest Chrome, latest Firefox, Safari, maybe like iOS. iOS nine is fine, but if you're supporting older iOS, it's like some there's some bugs with uh, height VH that you can, yeah. That you might you have to be careful when using Flexbox. So there's a so another one is like, do you flex shorthand or longhand? So actually, there's this like Flexbox spec that say that encourage you should use Flexbox shorthand because it. We set certain values like in flexbox shorthand is like flex. The first argument is like flex, um, flex grow, flex string, and flex basis. So that is the. So we actually encourage you to use flex. 
short hand rather than flex long hand because in flex long hand I think if you use flex long hand some property will get overwritten and you get some funny results yeah so that is like okay another thing is like this flex zero one auto is like yeah it's like this is a syntax of flex short hand so okay uh, I will just briefly explain like what does like flex basis auto means it's like you see like a lot of um, uh, when when do you use auto? It's like there's something about this like uh, zero one auto. This is the initial. Okay, when you define a flex, uh, display flex in your parent container and all your children. This flex zero one is the initial value of the the flex uh, container. So uh, what it does is like uh, if you didn't define anything, like didn't define any width. To your child container, it will try to like uh, auto fit all your content. If you have content inside your child container, you will try to like fill up the all the space. If there's extra space, you try to like fill up. So basically, it's like automatic. It's an auto automatic mode. Yeah. So, uh, and another one is like if you are using Flex zero one. Flex O one zero is like uh, okay. I should move on. Yeah. So this is the. Thing. Okay, I should move on. Okay. Uh, next one is like auto margin. It's like do you know that you can use like margin auto with flex box? It's like you know like if you if you do uh, centering your layout right, you always do margin zero auto, like something like that. So you can actually use margin zero margin auto in with flex box um, because it's like I think in the spec they say that if they encourage you to use like auto margin because that is the default way of layering then you then if you see that you're like well it's a like certain part is like not what you want then you can start to use justify content yeah so next next topic is like what we try to use layout Flexbox 4 is like we try to use Flexbox because it's a new thing, so we try to say, okay, let's use Flexbox to lay out all our header, our content, our footer, everything. But yeah, try to, but please don't do that because it's quite, in a way, like if you, if you, if you, I find that it's like I try to use Flexbox to lay out stuff, then in, along the way, I discover that because of this, like, if you are not, sometimes it's because of like uh, the way that the flex box is done is the axis. Like if you set, for example, if I said like uh, I want to lay out my content to like to have a header content and a footer, then so you by default you set flex con column. Then you set flex column really. Then you start to do like all, all your layout thing, and you start to get lost as you try to do like add on more stuff. So I find that it's like. In the process, you have to go and check back. Oh my! And do I set it as column or I set it row? So it can get quite messy. So it's better that you you just do position rel relative position absolute, and you know that your content is always there. So you don't have to like keep track. Like, do I set the column or set the row? Like sometimes I set to column to row really, then things become column. Then yeah. So another. Um, Article by this uh, this Jack Akibo, he said that try not to use Flexbox for page over layout because it's like there's an issue with like if you are loading your content, some of the content because like in Flexbox right you're using Flex Grow content, it's like your Flexbox content is not in flow, it's wait for the content to come. If your content is not loaded yet, your content is like basically it's all shrink, you shrink up. So you have this like you have this issue the, this weird. Meaning when your like your user is loading your web page, then this your layout, your layout is a bit like like uh, off off layout or something like that. So he has a video about describing this issue. Like you should, if there's an issue, like if you want your your content to keep your layout when the content is loaded, maybe you can you should reconsider really using Flexbox. So another good case for using Flexbox is like you use it for small components, like doing vertical centering for your uh, maybe some small components like your your 
pictures or something like that. And some things like you can use it for menus like lists is very good for that and grid or items. It's like those are like not not your giant page your all, all your page layout. It's basically just like small components like your list, your list of uh, menus, your list of like reading photos, that is good for that. And not so good, maybe sticky footer, like, yeah, you can use it if you are, yeah, and other. So, example using like vertical centering, it's like, yeah, this is one example. Like, if you are using vertical centering, it's like, you, it's quite, so, so in, to do vertical centering, right, all you have is like, you just dis define your container, display flex, then you just say, like, in the main axis, just if a content centered along the main axis. So if I let's say it's like by default is center. If I didn't define anything, it's like uh, is is centered at the to the left because it's like by default justify content is flex start. Yeah, so it's like flex start. By default is flex start. So it's because by default when you define. Display facts, right, is all the items are in a row, so by default. So if you want to do it center, you just do center. Then you go to center. And align item, you align your items at the center of this this horizontal. Because it's row, so justify is like along the main axis, then just align is like along this axis. Yeah. Another is uh, responsive horizontals. It's like your list, like you can, if you define your list, then I think it's, yeah, it's like if you are doing responsive layout, then this is very useful. Yeah. Another one is uh, grid. If you are doing grid, like something like this, you have doing grid, uh, page. yeah, something like this. It's like you can, you can do grid, like, so this container, uh, this pink container is a, uh, what I did is a uh, margin auto. So you can use margin auto and you do a display flex, row, wrap. So you just flex start your, you have, so so for this is like, um, what I do is like to cheat the grid to be centered, right? I have another flex box inside the grid. So it's like I, I define display flex for the pink, for the main one. So this is like a display, display flex and I define another display flex inside this item here. So you sort of like cheat it to have a grid layout. So it, your skill, yeah. So that is the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh let me <laughs> Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Because it's like I Okay, uh gotcha is like if you are defining margins inside your items then if you didn't define you have to take care of let's say that if you define a flex basis width of like for example in this in these examples it's like you say uh you add a margin, let's say 1 EM, maybe not 2, two, two. then yeah, you, your stuff can get like this. So your, when you're doing a flex basis weave, right, you have to do a, you have to consider that into your flex box because it's the, w the margins and paddings are not counted inside your items. So that is one. So you might need to do something like, like you have to minus off the 0 0.2, 0 0.4 EMs or something like that. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, it's not doing anything. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. You have to sort of like accommodate the the margins. Yeah. That's one. Mm, what other stuff? Another way to solve this is to add negative margins to the parent component. And another way is to nest. Yeah. Nest. So put another container and start inside the flex thing, and then everything on that. Yeah. <laughs> more robust because then you don't have to calc or, or negative or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I come up with this like, demo like last night. <laughs> yeah, so... I came up with my demo just now, so... <laughs> yeah, just... Yeah. Anyone else? Flexbox? Um, browser compatibility? Mm. Dare I? So I Flexbox as of now is support is partially supported in IE 10, 11. IE 8 supports it fully. Almost, if we are going by industry standard in the agency's <coughs> perspective, we usually say current browser and two behind Flexbox is fully supported, except for one of the mobile browsers. I, I think it's Opera Mini or something. Not too sure about that. But so if you're if you're actually I think one way to get around this is to show whoever your stakeholder is, is the fact that Microsoft has already stopped supporting IE altogether. That's a very that's a very strong case. Um, otherwise, other than that, actually it's pretty safe to use Flexbox in your projects. But as 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 uh, she mentioned, try not to use Flexbox for entire layouts because there are, there's still a lot of quirks to Flexbox. In fact, actually, what's recommended recently is the grid layout, which maybe somebody is going to talk about this in, in a future meetup. But <coughs> that is a specification that is more suited for doing full-scale full layouts of pages. Flexbox is more of a way to, as she mentioned, for small components that you want to align vertically, because like everybody wants everything aligned center, but somehow browsers are just not built that way. So Flexbox is really, really good for things like that. Anyway, our next speaker is going to be Chris. And he's going to talk a bit about SAS, I think, basics of.